Hi there, welcome to Lush Living. <clears throat> uh, today's topic is uh, top rest positions because believe it or not, there's actually choices you can make to be in a restful state but not always like laying in bed or laying on a couch that could give you more movement opportunities but at the same time actually be resting. I'm Katie Lush, the creator of Lush Living, so thanks for joining me today. Um, you might be able to hear in my voice, <clears throat> struggling a little bit in my voice. Uh, if you received my weekly email I had written yesterday about how on Monday I went to bed and I kind of had like a sore throat and wasn't feeling great and woke up yesterday, I was kind of fine. And then for whatever reason today I've woken up and I don't feel great. And I've learned that if I don't take the rest opportunities kind of spread throughout my week like I should, my body chooses to rest for me, which usually means that I get an illness or some sort of like low grade something that I'm fighting that forces my body to actually like shut down and go to bed early and get a lot of rest and recuperation. So that's the state that I'm in. But on the flip side, my family and I take a trip to Arizona right before Thanksgiving every year. And I call it the calm before the storm in order to like rest, recalibrate, recharge, all before going into the holiday season. And I think ultimately it puts us in a better frame of mind for entering the holidays having just had like a respite, period. So let's get started with my favorite rest positions. I'm gonna choose, I think my top three, I might throw out a fourth, but anyways, um, it helps if you have some props available. Um, I have my half foam roller, which you know I know and love, uh, you may want to sign up for my weekly email because I'm going to tell you guys when I'm going to have some of these props for sale um, around the Christmas season. So if you go to katylush.com, K-A-T-Y-L-U-S-H, and sign up for my weekly email, you will know when I'm selling these guys um, so that you can have them in your hot little hands for any props. But anyways, I have a half foam roller. I have a bolster, it's just a regular yoga bolster. Um, I don't think I'm gonna use my wedge today. And I have a yoga brick. I think that might be it, that might be it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is called a constructive rest position. This is something I actually learned in the dance department a million years ago. Um, I'm gonna give myself a little head rest with my half foam roller, but you can lay your head flat if that's comfortable. Let me position myself so you can see me. But you lie down on your back, get yourself as comfortable as you can be. You're gonna let your knees fall in and sort of rest on one another. And then you're gonna give yourself a hug with your arms and you're gonna stay. So it's kind of like everything's falling toward your midline. And you just breathe and hang out. <clears throat> After a period of time, I will usually switch which arms on top just for variety, but same idea. And just kind of letting your body fall and hang and let go. And so your body parts aren't working very hard to hold themselves up. They're just melting into the shape that you've created. Whew. Gosh, it feels really, really relaxing. So, oh, I just want to hang out here all afternoon. It feels really, really good. A lot of these poses help down regulate your nervous system so that you actually can calm down, rest, recuperate, relax. You know, laying on the couch and watching TV or reading a book, like that's fine too. I rest in that manner as well. Um, but you know, like in yoga, they have Shavasana. There's nothing like that in the Pilates world, unfortunately, but I think that there's restful positions you can be in that can help calm your body down when it needs to. Um, yeah. Oh, feels good. So that's position number one. It's a constructive rest position. You can take that same positioning and hold on. I'm going to go grab a stool real quick. Okay. So if you were to take that same position and put a chair, 
this is used in a lot of physical therapy settings if people have low back injuries where you would rest your calves up on a stool or a chair let your pelvis be neutral you can bring the stool in as close or as far away as you need depending on your hamstring length but you want your pelvis to be neutral you can still have a baby headrest pardon the car alarm ah. But same thing where you're offloading your legs to the seat or the stool. It gives your low back a little bit more of a release, a little bit more pressure down on the floor. You can crisscross your arms again over your chest, giving yourself a hug. Oh, it feels really nice. It's almost soothing. A lot of these positions are very soothing. I think anytime you're calming your nervous system, it just feels really like, oh, like you just want to sigh. And relax. And then you can switch your target left top. Oh. oh, just feels really good. Okay, so the caveat of all these positions are there are all positions you need to actually get onto the floor for. Uh, the constructive rest position, the first one I just showed, you can do it in bed, but obviously you're not going to put a chair in your bed. And then these next two, you want to be on a little bit of a harder surface. So the next one is an iliacus release. I'm going to use my favorite half foam roller. It's about three inches high, I believe. But you have options. You can either put the round side up or the flat side up. I'm going to do flat side up. You're going to lie down just like you did a moment ago onto your back with your knees bent and your feet flat and you're going to take the half foam roller and slip it under your pelvis a little bit closer toward your feet so that it deliberately rocks and tucks your tail under into a baby curl. So my hip bones are leaned away from my thigh bones. My low back is almost touching down on the mat. Actually mine kind of is up a little. But it's deliberately tucking you under. And then you hang out here, trying to almost open up the hip flexors, letting the ribs and the chest soften and sink. And just hang out here and breathe. So the more you can let your back sort of hammock and round out, the better. I find being on a yoga mat for this is really helpful because my tendency is to slide up toward my head. So if I can be on a sticky surface, it kind of stops me from moving. But there's no exact amount of time you want to be in any of these positions. Ultimately, your body is going to tell you how long you need in each position. So. For this position specifically, I usually wait until my body either sighs or yawns or I can feel like my body relaxes into it a little bit. <clears throat> if I had to give it a time limit, I would love to be here for about five-ish minutes at a minimum because it takes sometimes that amount of time to just oh, let the tissues release and adapt and just settle. Feels really good. Oh, it feels so great. I'm going to try, I'm going to flip the dome on over. This is good. I mean, this is good too. I'm not sliding quite so much. You kind of have to put your sacrum off the edge of it to make room for it to tilt. Actually, this feels really good too. It's a little harder under my bottom, but kind of in a good way. So play around with whatever feels best for you. If you don't have a half foam roller, you can just stack a bunch of pillows. Um, if you have like a lumbar pillow, that might actually be a good option. Oh, it feels so good. Okay, so then after you've done an iliacus release, let's do what we love. So I guess I am doing four. Um, my favorite, which is the psoas release. So quick tip, if you tend to have low back tightness, personally, I find if I do the iliacus release First, my body responds to the psoas release better. If I do the psoas release kind of cold, like first thing in the morning, sometimes it's really rough on my tissues. It's just a little too much too fast, which is fine. Um, I just choose not to. 
um, I'll do the iliacus release instead and then work my way into the um, psoas release second. So just a little food for thought. But I have a bolster. Again, you can stack a whole bunch of pillows and place your shoulders on them. And then I'm gonna put my brick on here. You can also use a half foam roller as like a headrest. Um, totally up to you. I'm gonna keep my half foam roller nearby because this might be a little high for today. But you're gonna um, sit up in front of your bolster and you want your hamstrings to be touching the mat any way you can. And then you're gonna roll yourself down. You can use your hands. It's not like a roll back and Pilates, but you want your, if you're a female, your bra line to be right on the edge of the bolster. So I'm gonna kind of be on my elbows for a moment and I'm gonna move the bolster where I need it to be. My hamstrings should still hopefully be touching the mat. If they've lifted, I've actually gone too far. And then from here, I'm gonna let myself sink on the bolster. I have to scooch a little bit down and then I'm gonna lower my head. Whew, that's actually kind of perfect onto the brick for today. Whew. So it's the same idea of that hammock idea where my back is trying to round out at the rib cage level. I have a little room for my ribs to drop into with gravity. My hamstrings are still heavily touching the mat. My head is supported and I'm in a little bit of like, almost like a sit up position. And you just hang here and breathe. I used to watch TV like this a lot at night. I'd get on the floor and build up my pillows and watch TV, which is kind of perfect because that means I was laying there for like at least 20 minutes. So, and I could really feel the difference in my body. I've kind of lost that habit. We moved and now I have hardwoods and no rug and the space is not as conducive for it. So, um, something I would like to get back into the habit of doing. Plus, I brought all my props to the studio and they're not in my house anymore. <laughs> so building some of this stuff with pillows is fine. It's a great alternative, but it's a little harder to access. But same thing, if you can hang out in this psoas release position for, you know, five minutes at a minimum. I mean, I've laid here as long as an hour. I think the only thing that happens is my pelvis will get a little tired of being on something harder, a harder surface. This Cadillac is actually perfect. We just had it recovered and so it's got lots of extra foam in it. Oh, it just feels really, it's like firm, but it feels nice. The legs can just relax. Your goal is just to be passive with the rest of your tissues and just let the gravity soften your tissues, kind of releasing the back line of your body and putting slack on your psoas. So it feels a little slouchy, but in a good way. Belly's relaxed. Sometimes I'll get like a stomach gurgle. That's another form of relaxation of the body. Muscle twitches. And just breathe out and hang out here as long as you need. Whew. I'll find that my body will sigh or yawn. And then I know that I'm kind of down regulating. Oh, I would love to be here for like the next 30 minutes. It just feels really soothing and calming and it just feels good. Because you're also laying down, right? So if you could maybe read a book this way or if you have to be on your device, you can do it in this shaping, which will help. You know, being on a couch, it's a little squishy, so your parts are not exactly optimal, optimally organized. But when you're on a hard surface, you are. Uh, it just feels good. Ugh. So that's it. <laughs> uh, I actually feel really, really relaxed right now. It feels really nice. So good to know. So those are your four rest positions. You've got the constructive rest position where you're giving yourself a hug and you're letting your knees knock together. You have a more active rest position where you're using a stool or a chair and resting your calves on the stool or chair and you're lying on your back um, flat. You have the psoas, I'm sorry, the iliacus release where you're lying down flat and you're bolstering your pelvis up into a little bit of a tucked tail, a little round back, creating again that hammock shape for your pelvis, creating some room between your hip bones and your thigh bones. And then we have the grand finale of the psoas release where you bolster your upper body, your head and shoulders, as if you're doing like a mini sit up and you're creating that hammock shape through your rib cage as well, but now your legs are totally flat and flush on the floor. So 
So that's it.